Susan Beyer and this is Fun With Research. Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to talk about one of the most common questions I get from marketers who are looking at doing a research project, which is how are we going to find the right people to participate in our study, in our survey, or whatever you're doing. Um, this is a really important question because respondent strategy can have a lot to do with whether the results that come out of your study represent who you think they do and who you're planning on assuming that they do. So this is a really important question. Um, for a lot of companies, the first place to start is your customer database. You may have emails of people who have purchased from you either recently or long ago. You may have re uh, emails of people who purchased a long time ago and haven't come back or they lapsed their membership or whatever. So you may have a database of people who have already had contact with you, and that's a great start. The other nice thing about customers is they are the most likely to participate in your survey as long as your invitation comes from you. If it comes from some random research company they've never heard of, they're likely not going to open that email. So customers are a great start. But it may not be all you need. For example, your customers, because they know you and have engaged with you, are necessarily a biased group when you compare them to people who may never have heard from you. And depending on how you're collecting your customer data, um, it can be even more problematic. So if you sell through distributors, um, other retail stores, or other providers who are reselling your products, you may not have customer data about your buyers. And if you have a warranty database, um, that may actually be overloaded with people who have had a problem, and that's why they've registered uh, in your warranty databases to get something fixed. So they may not be representative either. So you have to sort of think about what your database looks like, use it for what it is, but have your eyes open to who it doesn't include. Including prospective customers is often a really good plan. Your customers can't be assumed to represent the people out there who don't know you and have had no contact with your company, even if they're shopping in the category. So you don't want to make that sort of dangerous mistake that says, my customers are like everybody else out there, because they may not be. Uh, you may have prospect emails or people who have contacted you through social media or something like that who haven't purchased from you that yet. Those are great. It's also possible to find people who are buying in the category or considering in the category, um, who have bought from a competitor, et cetera. So depending on what you're looking for, um, prospects are a good option to include in your survey. Um, you may be a company that actually doesn't have any customers yet. If you're starting up or if you have a new initiative that's reaching a whole different marketplace, maybe you've done things for uh, businesses before, but now you're providing a new direct-to-consumer product or service, um, you're going to have to go find respondents who you think are a pretty good target for what you're doing. And again, uh, panels can be great for that or other uh, respondent recruiting services that are going to help you get the people that you want into your study. So basically, there's lots of options um, within sort of your own contacts. You may also be able to partner with an organization that has the people you want to hear from in their own database and would be willing to share an invitation to your survey on your behalf with their people. So the important thing here is that their people need to hear from them that says, hey, our friends over at X are doing a survey. We hope you'd participate. And they're likely going to want to make sure that you're not collecting email addresses so that you can spam these people later. Um, and they may need a little more incentive, like, for example, seeing parts of the results of your research in exchange for sharing the invitation uh, with, with their customer database. So that can work well too. It takes a little more work, but we've seen great success uh, with some studies on that. So as you can tell, respondent strategy is incredibly important, and I would encourage you to think about that at the very beginning of your study. Talk to your research partner if you're working with one, and really strategize who it's important to have in the study so that you go in open-eyed with respect to who you're hearing from so when you get the results, you can interpret them in terms of applying that insight to people outside your customer database or certain demographic groups or whatever. So I hope that was helpful. There's more information at funwithresearch.com. We have a new video every Friday. I hope you'll stay with us and um, we'll see you next Friday.